Actually, automatically, all the KPIs are going to be um, are going to be uh, set to to one because uh, now uh, the threshold is, is much much lower. But this is just plain vanilla Excel services, so I'm not going to uh, insist too much on on it. The the fun thing comes when we start um, developing against this. So. One type of application that I have created here is this Excel Services Client application, which is actually a consumer of the Excel Services endpoint exposed by SharePoint. So when you want to work with this, uh, the first thing you need to do is to add a reference, a web reference to the Excel Services reference. And once again, uh, let me remind you, we're talking here about a web service, not a WCF service. So you're going to, to add a web reference rather than a service reference to, to it. Um, once you do this, uh, things become pretty, pretty clear and pretty simple. Uh, all I need to do is to uh, instantiate the, the proxy, uh, provide a set of credentials, and then I can start actually working with my service. So what I'm doing here is, uh, again, pretty simple. I'm opening the session. I'm opening my workbook, which is uh, on the server side. The path is Tatooine Components Store KPI XLSX. And I'm actually getting a range of values. Now, it happens that this range of values is a set of KPIs for my stores. So this simple piece of code actually gets a list of uh, KPIs for my company's stores. If I run this, and I will do it just quickly so that I can show you how this works. I'm going to debug it. Um, I'm going to get that particular information directly out of my Excel spreadsheet. So let me, let me pause for a moment while this runs and do a short review. So now I have a multi-dimensional model that is embedded into an Excel spreadsheet that is published on SharePoint Server. What I'm doing now is consuming the service exposed by SharePoint in order to get the data. So I'm doing the first step in order to move beyond, uh, beyond SharePoint. So now I'm hitting my breakpoint, I'm going to hit an F10, and as you can see, or we should see, there's going to be 306 objects in my array of results, and these are the actual stores with their actual values. Uh, so far, so good. And I'm going to leave this client here, we're going to reuse the information that we have here in uh, uh, our next demo. Let me now show you a little bit about other types of APIs that we have for uh, Excel services. Uh, let me just start the magnifier so all of you can see better. This is a very, very uh, simple example on how we can use uh, Excel services with the REST API. The REST endpoint, endpoint for Excel services in SharePoint is, or at least the URL has this form of server name underscore uh, BTI underscore uh, BIN slash Excel REST ASPX. And there we have uh, the path towards our um, spreadsheet. This is a simple spreadsheet, it's not the complex spreadsheet that I've shown you. And then we have the ability of providing different types of commands via the REST API. What I'm doing here is something pretty easy, I'm retrieving the range between the cells A1 and C3, and in the meantime, I'm changing the value of A1. Uh, the simple uh, XLX spreadsheet has only three values in it, one, two, three. Now, when I hit this, and I hit it against my, against my uh, SharePoint server, what it's going to do is, via the REST API, it's going to, uh, as you can see, retrieve uh, these, uh, these values. So, this is just a, a quick example of how the REST API works. Let me also show you uh, a different uh, thing related to the JavaScript object model. So, I'm having here this uh, simple text file, which, as you can 
see contains uh, a bit of HTML, but mostly contains, uh, uh, contains some, uh, uh, some JavaScript. So what I'm doing here, um, in addition to other things, is getting access to the Excel web access object on the client side. And then I'm going to kind of automate that using my JavaScript, which is on the client side. How do I do it? Well, turns out that it's pretty easy to do. As you can see here, I have a content editor web part, and the content editor web part has been loaded with this piece of HTML and JavaScript. Now, when you put next to it an Excel web access web part, that JavaScript is going to automate the instance of your object that is created in the browser. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out that in this pre-beta version there is a bug and the values are not going to, be, uh, going to be displayed. But one hint that it works is that it writes in the, in the lower part of the browser the number of the callback function that it's calling. If you will access after the session the published demo, you will see that what I'm actually doing is writing a bunch of stuff in the status bar of the browser. So this is a good indicator that things actually work. Now, let me get back a little bit to, to the slides and 